Welcome to the Amari Fingerless Glove Crochet Pattern Part 1. This is an 8 ply double knit or light worsted yarn. Here are the tools of the trade. You will need a measuring tape of some description in order to take a good measurement of your hand as per the pattern instructions. I also recommend you have a stitch marker to help you define where the end of your cuff, the beginning of the main body of your glove begins, and also a large eye darning needle for sewing in your ends at the end of the project. Of course, a pair of scissors, and we are going to be using US stitch terms. Now we're working with a four millimeter needle, and as I said, you are going to need an eight ply double knit or light worsted yarn. Now this is a simple to make up pattern, a four pattern repeat. It is fully customizable. This pattern is a medium size as per the sizing in the pattern. However, you could work it in different lengths, in different yarns and hook sizes by simply practicing and playing with the size variations. It's a really nice, simple design with also a thumb area to give you that little bit of extension through the thumb and it works up in approximately an hour and a half to two hours per glove for the average crocheter so the thumb just gives you that bit of cover and i will show you how you can also potentially leave off that thumb covering and create like this glove just a simple edging what I've done here is just do the last row of the round to edge it and on this glove I've not completed any added stitching at all for a slightly more open thumb position and it is all down to personal preference what you like. Personally I don't like too much cover on my thumb but I do get requests for patterns that do have the instructions for that. as I said this pattern is fully customizable and there are instructions in your pattern how by changing how many rows you do you can grow the width of your pattern across the hand how many stitches you add into your cuff area can extend it and likewise through the body of the pattern and I will explain the multiples of the stitches required so let's get started Okay, so we're going to begin with a slip knot, and of course there are lots of different ways to do this, and I just got taught a simple crossover, twist, pop my fingers through, grab the yarn and pull it through. Working with our 4mm crochet hook. Now I like this a particular hook because it's an ergonomically shaped one which is really nice in the palm of your hand. Again we are using US stitch terms for this pattern. Now if you are not sure about those there is a conversion chart in the pattern from UK Australia to US stitch terms. So we're beginning at the bottom end of the glove, the cuff, and we are working the required chains for the length of the cuff. Now if you're a beginner crocheter, getting your chains nice and even is an important step in learning to have your tension right so that your chains are all the same size. So I'm allowing for 10 chains up to the end of my cuff. I'll just show you this lying it here. So this is the cuff distance. Now you may prefer a longer cuff you may prefer a shorter cuff and this is where you can be creative in how you do this. Now we're going to continue just do one more stitch and I'm going to place my stitch marker in the previous stitch which is the last or tenth stitch the end of the cuff. This just helps you as you go along to decipher between the ending of the cuff the beginning of the pattern because you are going to do quite different stitches in that cuff area and it's just important that you get to define that starting point now as you go along you'll get familiar and you may find you just prefer to simply count up from the bottom and no longer use the stitch marker as it is a bit of a pain removing back and forth as you go across so now we're just going to work the rest of our chains up 
for the remainder of the body. And in this particular instance, we are doing another 22 chains. So in total, we'll have 32. Now the body of the pattern does require us to have an odd number. So it's a 2 plus 2 plus 2 and then plus 1, so an odd number, for you to create your pattern. However, because we're working on our chain, we do need to add that extra one stitch to make it even. So this is where we get our 22. But once we've actually done our first stitch and worked our single crochets back across that first row, you'll see that we are now working just across 21. So into the second chain from your hook, we begin row one with a single crochet. Again, we are working in US stitch terms. This would be a double crochet in your UK or Australian terminology. So you're just going to single crochet across all of your chains. And as you come through to that stitch marker, pop it off and replace it in the aligning stitch. Right, so we're just a few stitches away now from the stitch marker and we're going to continue single crochet in those last few stitches. So hook in the stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two stitches. Hook through stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. End again. Now that is the end of our main body pattern. The next stitch is the beginning of the cuff. So we'll work that one single crochet, remove the stitch marker and place it back in that stitch to make sure that I remember where I'm beginning and ending the cuff. Now the cuff can be any number of stitches. In this instance we're doing 10. You can make it longer and it doesn't have to be even or odd. You would just need to note down what you had uh, decided upon. Now if you were using a lighter yarn or a heavier yarn, you may increase or decrease your cuff length depending on how long as you crochet your work is. So it really does depend on your tension, the size of your yarn and your hook if you are going to make variations. This is an eight ply double knit light worsted yarn with a four millimeter needle and my tension would be considered probably average to tightish. So there are instructions on tension gauge in your pattern for you to check and compare to your own. So in that last chain we just work our last single crochet. I'm just going to pull up the tail there, tighten it off so you can see where our marker is to our cuff and the rest is the remaining body of your glove. Now we're not going to chain one to turn, we are just going to turn. However if you like to do a chain one and turn you'll find that your work will have a little bobble edge. By not adding a chain as we turn we do keep our edge straighter. So in our very first stitch of the second row we're going to work a standard single crochet under both of those loops and then we're going to continue on the remaining nine stitches working the single crochet not under the two loops but into the back loop only. So work the stitch as per normal but just picking up the back loop only. This is a standard technique for creating a ribbed look because it gives you a nice little line ridge area and tilts your work backwards each time you do it. And so you get that really nice almost knitted rib look. So just counting my stitches there and of course I'm up to my marker and I've got one single crochet back loop only to complete the cuff area. Now I'll just remove my marker. I need to pop that back into my next, sorry, into that last stitch I've just completed. 
so I know what that position is. And now row two is the beginning of our pattern. So what we're going to do is, it's a very simple pattern. We're going to do a single crochet in the first stitch. Under both loops, single crochet. Then you're going to make one chain, skip a stitch, and then work, so skip that stitch and work in the next stitch, a single crochet. And this will create the little eyelet effect. Chain one, skip a stitch, and work into the next stitch. Now it's important when you make your chain that you do make a good size chain. Don't make it too small and tight, otherwise it won't fit across the stitch. Remember it is replacing the stitch below, so it needs to be able to travel across the same distance. Otherwise your work will tend to tighten up in the rows where you have chains. So it's a single crochet chain, single crochet chain, simple pattern that you're repeating right up to the top end and you will be finishing. So chain one, skip one, single crochet. Chain one, skip one, single crochet. And this is where you get your two stitch repeat and then you need one more at the end. So single crochet chain is your pattern repeat and you need to end on a single crochet which is your additional one stitch. Two plus two plus two plus one. Single crochet, chain one, and we'll be at the last stitch, so missing the single crochet and into the last stitch, single crochet. Now again, on this particular row, we are going to do a two chain turn. It's the only row that you do chains to turn. So two chain, and the reason we're going to do that is one chain is a turning chain, the other chain is to cover off the very first single crochet which is below those two chains and you're going to be working then row three so that second chain is basically the stitch of your single crochet and then we're going to work across so that replaces your single crochet stitch and we're going to work then straight into the first chain gap one single crochet because we've started with a chain single crochet chain to go across so we're covering over that single crochet with the chain and now into the chain gap we do a single crochet so we're just moving the eyelet so that the eyelet now sits on top of a single crochet and it just moves it down to give it um, just a nice little uneven sitting point as you can see in the pattern. So each time chain in between and you're working your single crochet into the chain space. So again the two chains at the beginning basically are covering off the first stitch so you've got chain gaps sitting over the top of your single crochets and single crochets into your chain gaps. Now as you come down to the end, we're going to single crochet into our chain gap. We've got one more chain. Skip the single crochet into the chain gap. And you'll notice we've still got one stitch left. So on this row, we're not ending just on one single crochet. We will end on a second single crochet. So we need to, at the end of the pattern, do one more single crochet to fill that stitch and then we will begin our cuff stitching. And each time we're working across the cuff stitching, our stitches are completed in the back loop. So the single crochet worked into the back loop of the stitch below, into the back loop single crochet. Just replace the stitch marker back in that stitch, first stitch there, we've done two, so we're just popping it in that again. 
It won't be long before you easily can define where that is and may not need your stitch marker, but if you are having trouble with that and um, not getting your stitch count quite right, a stitch marker is a brilliant and easy way to keep markings in your work. So the difference with this row is that as we come down, each stitch is in the back loop only, except for the last stitch of the row. So what we're going to do on the last stitch is do a normal single crochet placing the hook underneath both loops here we go underneath both loops and not in the back loop underneath and the reason for that it just creates a more stable stitch rather than just through the back loop so I'm just picking up both those loops there and we'll create the single crochet it'll just give a more sturdy finish on the edge and again we just turn we do not add a chain so in the beginning the first stitch again is a single crochet standard then we continue single crochets in the back loop now this is row four row four row two row four are wrong side so as you're working you are looking at the wrong side of your glove so back loop first stitch standard single crochet one of those and then nine more so whatever number of stitches you have on your cuff your first stitch and when it's your last stitch of your cuff it will always be a standard single crochet so our last stitch here of the cuff my mark is in the road there we go we're just going to create that last single crochet back loop and you can see how we're getting a lovely nice ridge effect pop the marker back in we've done two rows of eyelets now this time we're going to do a completely different stitch so that's where our first chain we've got two single crochets and then a chain gap so we're now going to do a half double crochet so loop over the hook hook through under the stitch yarn over hook draw through yarn over hook and draw through all three loops on your hook again yarn over hook hook underneath your two loops of your stitch yarn over hook pull your yarn through yarn over your hook and draw through the three loops on your hook now this is a half double crochet so we've done two of those in our single crochets and this is our first half double crochet in the chain gap and then we have a single crochet there we're doing a half double crochet into the single crochet half double crochet into the chain gap and continue through to the end now you've just got to watch this one on row four a half double crochet in that last single crochet and remember we started that row with the two chains so we do need to remember to place a half double crochet here otherwise we will have reduced our stitch count and we do need to have 21 stitches and that's the last one there so what this is doing is just increasing the pattern slightly but we're still keeping our cuff only on single crochets which means it's a little bit smaller so this is where you get a bit of shaping being developed through your glove now turn your first single crochet here we want it done as a standard single crochet hook under both loops and then we will continue down to our stitch marker working all of our single crochets in the back loop only this is row five and you are facing the right side of your work so what we're doing here is we're ensuring that that first stitch is also nice and stable by working a standard single crochet and we're creating that lovely ridge underneath which is going to be part of the detailing that the glove on the right side creates whoops so again we're going right down to our marker with single crochets worked in the back loop and then for the rest of the cuff this time we're going to do a yarn over slip stitch so yarn over hook through yarn over pull through and then draw through the two loops on your hook 
yarn over through the back loop pull the yarn through and then draw it through the two loops on the hook now you might find by just popping your fingers to the base of the stitch as you put the hook through and draw it through just hold it there you can see I place my thumb there just to secure what this does is create a little bit of a ropey stitch on that fifth row it draws it down and just creates a really nice effect on your ribbing the yarn over slip stitch is a popular stitch and is featured in my 12 ply ribbed fingerless gloves which have been super popular I'll put a link to that pattern because if anyone's interested in a really easy but very effective glove and these stitches all help with the amount of stretch and give so I yarn over back loop pull yarn through and through the two loops so we're just missing that second yarn over as you come through that you would do for the half double crochet yarn over through under the back loop pull the yarn through then pull through the two loops and remember of course your last stitch even though we're doing a yarn over slip stitch it will be worked standard so under both loops and drawn through so no back loop no back loop on the last stitch of the end of the cuff on the beginning of the cuff or if you're working a single crochet coming back from the top and that's your basic complete lot of five rows so of course we're going to continue with row two through five which creates our four row pattern repeat and you'll continue this until you get to the desired width of your glove and of course as this does stretch see the lovely line we get by doing that back loop single crochet stitch on row five You'll just repeat this pattern you do need to make it less distance than your hand and I go through that in the pattern for you to understand how to ensure you get it correct for your size so the right side has a distinctive ridge this is the wrong side of your glove and you can see there is no distinctive ridge it's the wrong side whereas this is the right side of your glove and you have a distinctive ridge there from your back loop working i hope you found this video tutorial really helpful in supporting you as you've crocheted your umari glove for your part two the finishing seam top edge and thumb finishing your link is in your pattern to take you directly to that video tutorial your pattern is available on etsy join us on facebook and instagram and please subscribe to the channel comment and let us know your thoughts and how you've enjoyed this pattern and as always happy crocheting <laughs>